All right. I hope I'm live. The quality is a little grainy, but I... Ugh. Setting up this new computer. All right, so there's no lag. Well, not much lag on that end. Okay. All right. So I'm here, and I got some stuff. First off, I'm streaming on my new uh, computer here. Ugh. Ooh. Move. Yeah. Oh, it's back. Whatever. Reverse. Whatever. So. Yeah, Dell uh, $1,000 uh, PC, which I have to figure out how to work. And this you're seeing right here is the free Samsung, I think it's like 22-inch TV I got for free at a yard sale because the lady was like 10 bucks, And I was like, hmm. She said 5 bucks, And I was like, hmm. And I got out my $5 bills. But they were crumpled $5 bills in my wallet because I'm always carrying, like, messy, crumpled up dollar bills that look like little balls of, like, paper. So I have to take five minutes to, like, flatten them out and everything in front of her. She's on the phone, impatient. She's like, you know what? Just take it. So I think this is uh, 22 inches. It's from, like, 2009 or something. So it works. I think it has HD or some crap, Ugh, 1080p or whatever the hell it is setting things are oh shit shit what the hell turn off my own audio shit, hold on what you son of a bitch all right Fuck. Oh, it's Rick you're hearing. Oh, fuck that. All right. So, yeah. So, this is not great, but in the future I'm going to improve it. I was going to stream, but I was setting up OBS, and I was watching a YouTube video, and that took freaking hours to do, because fuck it, it took fucking hours to do, and that didn't make sense, and the encoding it. And, oh, you know, I did a, there's a, a stream program. There's a speed program where it says, oh, speed, you know, test how much speed you got. I'll show you. Shit. Here. Yeah, you can't see that very well. This is, well, well, old-fashioned shit. I don't know if you can see that, but there's 6,059 kilobytes or KBPSs, whatever they are. And I'm supposed to get that like every second or whatever it is. I'll see how much I'm getting now. I don't know if you can see that. Um, ooh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, do your magic, uh, uh, yeah, I just burped, I don't care, okay, so, well, oh, now it's doing its thing, come on, oh, well, it's hovering around 4,000-ish, ah, uh, it's going up there, oh, who knows, hmm, so 4,826, that's not a horrible, but it's not great, but I don't have an ethernet cable yet, so who knows? Fuck, what do I, damn it. Uh. Well, okay. So I'm gonna show you some of my junk. The title of this is partly Mickey Review Stuff, because that was supposed to be a new series I was gonna do, but whatever. I have junk to show you, because I'm gonna show you junk. I got like, DP, Drunken Peasants in an hour or something I'm going to watch. But for, like, next hour, I'm going to, like, show you crap and, yeah. So, ugh, first off, I have a bunch of records. Nobody saw my record collection because um, it wasn't that popular and the quality wasn't that good because freaking I have hundreds of records now that most I've gotten for, like, a dollar, 50 cents, and showing them all off and talking about each one took for freaking ever. And I got tired and the quality was kind of bad at the end. And so it took a long ass time to process. So, all right. I'm just going to show you the crap I got here. This is recent, by the way. Half of these I got for free. Somebody was throwing them out. The other half of them I got for a dollar or less at the Goodwill, Salvation Army, 
Well, mostly Salvation Army, because Goodwill's fucking shit. Oh, yeah, look at the camera. Oh, who? Maybe. Goodwill is fucking shit. You know, like, oh, we want $5.99, $4.99 for a fucking shitty-ass used record that's scratched. Oh, we want a Billy Joel's 52nd Street or whatever the hell it is for $8. The fuck? You, like, like, I get it. Maybe you don't want people buying and reselling your shit, but charging a high price is not benefiting anybody. Right? The poor people who might want it, they can't afford it. And the people who want to resell, they can't resell. So you're not fucking benefiting anyone. So whatever. Here we go. The fifth dimension. Up and away or whatever it is. Go where you want to go. Oh, yeah. Here's the back. Some funky pictures of the band or whatever. I'm not a huge fifth dimension fan, but this was free. So Ooh. this in here, you can't see this. But in there, it says $5. So somebody at some point paid $5 for this. I got it for free. Yeah. What is this one? Here's Kansas, the hard rock band Kansas, if anyone remembers that. Two for the show. I guess it's two old ladies. Um, it's a double album, I think. And here's the inside. It's kind of cool. Hard rock, maybe progressive rock. I don't know. There's some more of the band here and their shenanigans Ugh. kansas yeah i'll have to listen to this at some point half these records i haven't listened to but i will when i get time i just don't collect them and put them on a shelf i actually listen to them because you know and most of them aren't in perfect shape so i don't really care if i play them and scratch them a little bit it's not a big deal but whatever uh let's see this one has no Sleeve, but it's Van Halen, 1984. Jump, Panama, Drop Dead Legs, Hot for Teacher, House of Pain. Not a bad album. Um, oh, yeah, this is, uh, what is this? This is Santana. Yeah, Carlos Santana. I like one of his albums, Albatross, or the one with the black lady with the tits. That's kind of hot. I like that album, but this you can't see much. But this is a Santana album. Oh, would you get in there? I hate putting albums away because I don't want to freaking rip the edges of this, right? And it's always so annoying when the paper gets crunched up and it's stuck and you have to like try to push it in and then take it back out and flatten the edges and push it back in. And it, God, it's just so annoying. If there could be a system to get rid of that, that'd be nice. Here we go. What's this? Rumors, Fleetwood Mac. I got these also for free. So there's no sleeves with them. What's this one? Ooh. Another Fleetwood Mac. Monday morning. Um, 1975. I don't know what album this is, but whatever. It's Fleetwood Mac. Here's something cool. New Orleans, Sweet Emma. And her Preservation Hall jazz band. Yeah. Kind of cool looking. Some jazz band thing. Yeah. Ugh. Here we go. Here's Hot Sugar Sugar. Stephen Paul Perry. Produced by Tom Kidd. Gary something. Sugar Sugar. Ooh. Radio Mix and Instrumental. So that's kind of interesting. What's this one? Uh, Billy something, feel the warmth. I think he's a jazz saxophonist or something. I don't know. That's cool. No, I don't know what that one is. Nah. Here's some random. Uh, Leon Redbone or something. I think he's a jazz or something here's the guy on the back oh yeah leon redbone you got the warner brothers um uh frog or whatever it is what year was this 1975 all arrangements by leon redbone string arrangements sweet mama hurry home or i'll be gone 
ain't misbehaving, Buffalo Nico something, big time woman. Kind of sounds like some standards, but here. Here's a Dimensions. Oh, yeah, Dimensions Band. 1981. Maybe this is a uh, new wave. I'm not sure. Oh, I kind of like the little cover there. Uh, oh, shit. Here we go. Here's a somewhat popular one. Bachman Turner Overdrive. Not fragile. This is probably a popular one from the 70s. This is a good shape. You open it up. It's got more of the band. Looking good. Bunch of guys with long hair and facial hair and all that stuff. And the back. And most of these records are in pretty good shape, surprisingly. They're not scratched horribly or anything. So, ugh. I gotta stop grunting. Why am I fucking grunting? Ugh, ugh, ugh. All right, I'll do an antique. I'll switch it up for you. Okay, let's see. Is there any good ones? Well, there's some good ones here. Ah, there's some better ones here. I'll find the good ones. And then I'll move on to an antique. Stop fucking. Okay. Moody Blues, Southern um, Sojourn. This one's in good shape. Yeah, you got the band in there. I think it's from the 70s. Uh, Led Zeppelin II in decent shape. Yeah, you got whatever is in there. Little gold record awards. Maybe this was a reprint or something. Anyway. Here's Deep Purple. One of their albums based on that uh, painting by What's-His-Name, who painted Heaven and Hell in the Renaissance or whatever. Uh, Jimi Hendrix mass hits from like 1968 or 9. I'm not a huge Jimi Hendrix fan because Jimi Hendrix, I don't know. Jimi Hendrix has three members of his band. He's got um, the guy with the afro. Well, this is not a good one of it. But he's got the guy with the afro. He's got the drummer. And then he's got Jimmy. And it feels almost like it's missing something, right? Because it's all Jimmy playing guitar and singing. And they're just backing him pretty much. And it almost feels like the songs aren't really that catchy. They're kind of a little generic and boring to me. And there's just, they're missing something. You need like a keyboard in the background or another guitar. It just feels a little empty half the time. I don't know. It's just, I listened to a bunch of his records I got and I just wasn't that impressed. I was like, okay, it's good, but it's not like crazy psychedelic jazz or no rock guitar thing. It was just kind of meh. I don't know. I mean, for it, not real. I mean, he was very good guitar, but there was Eric Clapton and a bunch of others. And, you know, I mean, he wasn't the first person to have a 15 minute song, but, you know, it was okay. But I don't know. It just wasn't stand out as being that amazing. Good, but not groundbreaking or anything. He was just a really good guitarist. But anyway, oh, here's another one. Uh, I don't even know what album this is. Freedom? Or no, that's a. Here's the inside, if you love Jimmy. Oh, yeah, Jimi Hendrix. This one's in decent shape. What album is this? Um, yeah, why did I rip that? Oh, The Cry of Love. Cry of Love. Some of these I have. I think this was put out after he died, The Cry of Love. It was a bunch of records they put out after he died because they wanted to make money. And either he didn't finish recording this or... It just was like a tape somebody stole. I know he had some bootleg recordings of him and, and a drunk Jim Morrison or something. And Jim Morrison was just drunk and ranting. Rah, dip, rah, dip, rah. And, and Jimmy was playing some generic songs or something. So who knows? Uh, what's this one? Oh, here's Angel. I think this is a um, glam metal band from the early 80s or late 70s. Angel. There's some of the band members. What year is this? Hold on. Angel. 19, ooh, 1975. Ooh, G. Graferia. I have another album of this from the same guy, one of these guys, Giuffera or Guferia, whatever his name is. It's an 80s glam metal album that's pretty awful. 
But uh, yeah, so I guess one of the lead guys in this started that band, and that album is not very good unless you like 80s glam metal. Shit, go. Ah, fuck this shit. Dude, why won't you go in? I don't want to rip the whole goddamn thing, but you won't go in. You know, fuck this. Ah, the hell with the hell with it. Fuck it. Piece of shit. Ah, more Moody Blues, cause yeah. All right, more Moody Blues. Is there anything good in here? If anyone knows Renaissance, they were a prog rock band from the uh, 70s. Prog rock mixed with like classical music, a bunch of long songs. First song is nine minutes. Another song is nine minutes. Last song, Mother Russia, also nine minutes. Long ass music. But good, because they're good. Shit. Uh, you know, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. You know. Uh, where's a... Climax Blues Band, if you ever heard of them. They're pretty decent. 1974. Some Lighthouse. They're a big band with um, saxophone, trumpet, lead vocals, percussion, cello, bass, sax, flute vocals, piano vibes. You know, so a lot of big brass rock band kind of thing. Pretty cool. I have the first one of their albums, and it's pretty good. Thoughts of moving on. We got some Charlie Daniels. And this is before. Charlie Daniels is now known for being like the spokesperson for the NRA and fucking singing about an America with the freedom and a gun in my hand and all that bullshit. And this is before he became like conservative America bullshit. There, he's just Southern rock and country boogie, whatever. And it's pretty nice. There's organ in this. There's guitar, you know, it's a pretty nice uh, jamming blues rock album. And it's got one of the uh, cut things, bargain bin, whatever things on the top. So I guess this didn't sell very well. I got another Charlie Daniels band here. This one is apparently one of his better albums from 1974. Ah, any Travelers, I don't know what that is. What band is this? Oh, David Bromberg. He's some Jewish musician. Ah, uh, isn't good. No. Stanley Jordan. CBD? Oh. Here's uh, Adam and the Ants. Kings of the whatever frontier. This is like New Wave. This guy's kind of nuts. 1980, CBS Records. Uh, let's see. Here we go. The original Jimi Hendrix Experience. Yeah, in good shape. Here's Jimmy. Here's the guy with the crazy afro. Here's the other guy. And the record is in surprisingly good shape. There's not a lot of scratches on this, so that's pretty good. You now, Purple Haze, Manic Depression, Are You Experienced, Foxy Lady. Good album. Oh, another Jimi Hendrix album. Electric Ladyland. Oh, yeah, the Jimi Hendrix experience. This one has kind of got some ring wear or whatever, but I don't really care. You know, the inside, kind of boring, but it's a double record. And the Gods Made Love, Burning the Midnight Lamp, blah, 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 Voodoo Child, Slight Return. Manhattan Transfer, the best of. Pretty cool. Manhattan Transfer, the best of Manhattan Transfer. I've never listened to this band, but apparently it was popular. And this thing is in really great shape. I mean, nobody played this. This is perfect. Atlantic Records. Oh, yeah. Okay, do I get anything else? Because then I'm going to move on to something else. AC, ACDC, um, If You Want Blood, the live album. The guy's got a guitar stabbed in his back, which is kind of cool and stupid, but that's ACDC. Riff Raff, Hell Ain't the Place to Be, The Jack, Problem Child, Rock and Roll, Damnation, Let There Be Rock. 
Okay. The hell is this place? Sticks, Paradise, Gala Premiere, and then temporarily closed. And the band, because why not? It's Sticks. I forget their popular songs. They're just Sticks. Oh, and here's another one. This I got for free, surprisingly, with the plastic. It's Pink Floyd, Animals, in perfect shape, with the plastic. I got for free, in a box of junk. Hell yeah. Let me see if there's anything in here to open it up with. Ooh, is this nice and shiny, man? This is a nice shape. I don't know if this is a reprint, maybe? No, it says 1977. And this record does not have a single scratch on it. So that's pretty good. For free. I could sell this on eBay if I wanted to for like five, ten bucks, but or more, but I don't want to, so. Man, get that plastic back on. Yeah, god damn it. Is it? I don't know. I like um I'm weird, but I like um Atomic Heart Mother, you know, the long 20-minute song and Alan's psychedelic breakfast. But their other ones are good. Shit, is there anything else? There's Chuck Man something concert. Land of Make Believe, I think it's a comedian thing with the F Hamilton Philharmonic Harmonic Orchestra. Kind of weird. It looks psychedelic, so I got it. Uh, let's see. There, sticks, whatever this is. Um, there's Foreigner, Hand Games, Foreigner, the progressive rock band with. Who were the classic members that were from other rock bands? I think there was one from Yes and the other one. Anyway, kind of a cool cover of a woman being about to be raped or something. You wouldn't be allowed to get away with this today, but back then this was cool, I guess. I don't know. Some woman in a bathroom. Here's the original Led Zeppelin. I have another version in a lot worse shape, but this one's in good shape. Classic burning of the Zeppelin. A few scratches, but pretty clear, I guess. Anything good? Oh, here we go. This one's not in great shape, but I got it for like 50 cents. So it's Black Sabbath, Paranoid. The cool kind of the guy with the suit, not suit, what am I saying? The knight kind of whatever the hell he's wearing. Here's the band. Here's Ozzy. Here's the rest of the band. Uh, let's see. What else? Here's the Grateful Dead, American Beauty, or whatever it is. Here's the back. I'm not a huge Grateful Dead fan, but, uh, you know, they're all right. This one's cool. Garrison or Gerson Kingsley's first Moog Quartet. So I guess this is a late 60s Moog synthesizer album. I guess they were experimenting with the Moog synth. Here's the back. It's kind of cool. So I guess it's a Moog album. Who doesn't love the Moog synthesizer? I guess the conductor wanted to use the Moog. So, because it was new. All right. Anything else? Yeah. Generic ones. Frampton Comes Alive, you know, classic album. Tubular Bells by Mike, um, Mike Oldfield or whatever it was from The Exorcist. I also have the uh, orchestral version of this. Oh, yeah, look at that. With the, like, the women or whatever and the dragon. Kind of cool. We got Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. That's a good album. Here's them around some trees or whatever. In good shape. And we got Joe Cocker. Um, I Can Stand a Little Rain. Joe Cocker is great. In fact, his edition of Little Help with My Friends, like the Woodstock version on YouTube, that should have been released because that was just amazing. That like eight minute, that was awesome. Like Joe Cocker took any Beatles song or any song somebody else did and he just did it better. 
because he just did it better. All right, what else? Joe Tucker, this guy. Uh, Jordan Daniels. Here's Dave Mason. I guess he's a guitarist from the 70s. Here is Solar Fire, whatever the hell this is. I think it's an instrumental from 1973. Side one, father of the day, father of night, in the beginning of darkness, Pluto the dog, Solar Fire, Saturn, Lord of the Rings, Mercury the winged messenger, Earth the circle. So it's kind of a, yeah, psychedelic or rock, rock, whatever it is. First one is nine minutes and five minutes and two minutes. So longer songs and, you know, something neat. Damn it, get in there. Get in. Get in. Fuck, I don't want to rip this. Hell. All right. Here's Aerosmith. Kind of cool. Might be the first album. 74. I don't know. It could be the first album. Aerosmith. <sighs> Here's a random album you've probably never heard of. It's Brigatti Lost in the Wilderness. Yeah, I don't know what. Um, I think it's like progressive rock or something funky. It's from 1976. So this is kind of a neat, weird thing. There's the two guys. And the record's in good shape. Here's more Angel, another version of Angel. There's like the fighting zombies or like some monsters or something. It's kind of a cool dark metal kind of theme, hard rock. No, that's what I was listening to. Here's a classic, Death Row, Tall, or however you pronounce their name. What is this? Aqua, whatever the hell it is. It's their classic album. And here's the inside of the Jethro, Death Girl Toll, the Aquary, whatever the hell it is. Let me read this fucking thing. Because I look like a dumbass. Ooh, what's this? Oh, is this a poster? Or a... Oh, maybe it's just lyrics to some of the songs. That's kind of cool. Basically the same thing. Anyway. All right. More Moody Blues. I already showed that. Sonny and Cher. I thought this wasn't Sonny and Cher. I thought there was something psychedelic or funky, but it's not. It's Sonny and Cher, whatever, pop. But if you're into that, I'm not. But the album cover is kind of cool. Yeah. It's something weird. I think this is a new wave, a flock of seagulls by Listen. And here's the weird cheesy guys on the back from the 80s. Oh, yeah. And it's got the bargain bin thing. Uh, all right. You want anything else? Fuck, I gotta have something for these people. Oh, yeah. Duke Ellington. Who doesn't like some Duke Ellington? Newport Jazz Festival Suite. Cool. Duke Ellington. Yeah, man. Some Cosmos Factory by CCR. Credence Clearwater Revival. Any classic songs in here? Ramble Tamble. Run Through the Jungle. Um, as long as I can see the night. Ooh, Heard It Through the Grapevine. The 11-minute version of Heard It Through the Grapevine is on this album. Sweet, man. I love that song. I like Marvin Gaye's version, but this version is just pretty freaking awesome. You know? Ugh. Our next two fans. 
Here's a band called Squeeze. I think this is a um, new wave band. 1985, produced for LOL Productions. Blah. It says LOL Productions. That's kind of cool. Squeeze. Squeeze, baby. Squeeze. Squeeze my dick with your titty. Buddy Rich, nah. What the hell is this? Uh, something. The evil, the devil in Miss Jones. I don't know what this is. If you have to go to hell, for go for a reason. The devil in Miss Jones. Is this a movie soundtrack or something? A film by Gerald Damiano starring Gregorian Spelvin. Music composed by Alden Shulman. I don't know, but I got it for free, so I can't complain. You get three records that are in good shape, or good enough shape. Here's one I actually listened to. I should have mentioned the ones I listened to, but Soul Burst. Coral Trey, uh, T. Jader, or whatever, how do you pronounce his name? I don't know. I'm bad with pronunciations. This is a nice, like, jazz album from the mid-60s with vibraphones or um, xylophones, marimbas, I think, something like that. One of those instruments. Soul Burst. It's pretty good. It's longer songs from 1966. You know, Soul Burst on the inside, too. So it's kind of a cool 60s jazz thing. What my grandparents might have been listening to back in the day. Here's C Train. Have you ever heard of them? They're kind of a prog rock or hard rock band. Uh, Roy Blumfield, drums and percussion. Richard Greer, violin and strings, guitar and vocals, saxophone and bass, bass and flute, lyrics. So there's a bunch of people in this band. C Train. It's still good as plastic. And originally this was two dollars, one ninety nine. I got it for a dollar, so hell yeah. I got it cheaper than inflation or whatever. I don't know if anyone's heard of this band, the G Jealous Band, Bloodshot. Kind of cool looking cover. Here's them in the back. Bunch of guys with a lot of hair and beards and everything. Did it cover all these? Probably not. No, that's good enough for me. Okay. On to books, because why not? I've showed you a bunch of record albums. Oh, here's a cool one. One more before I go. Gap. You got a gap? Oh, yeah. Maybe you need some gap, baby. And not the clothing store. The, the band gap. Oh, yeah. Here's them in the back. Bunch of black guys making music. What fun. So, kind of a weird album. I think it's 1979. I think this might be disco or hip hop. I'm not sure. But it's kind of cool. Okay. Screw that. Move that. All right. Oh, Jesus. This is heavy as fuck. I need a better way to display those. All right. Let me get some books. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right. Ugh. Get some books here. So, let's talk about antique books. Books in general. How do you know the value of an old book? Because there are a lot of old books. They've been making books for thousands of years at this point. How do you know if a book is old? How do you know if a book is valuable? What factors can determine a book's value? Well, if you're talking about 20th century books, you usually want first editions. They either have to be famous books like Hemingway or J.D. Salinger or... O. Henry, or, you know, and of these famous books, they have to be first editions 
and not just first editions, but first printings of first editions. And I'll show you an example. This is a first edition of Harry Potter and the Source uh, uh, Chamber of Secrets in pretty good shape, little there. But this is not just a first edition because they've been making the first edition of this book with the same cover and the same printing for decades now, since it came out in 98, um, right? The same pictures, the same drawings for the chapters. They've been making the same book since 98 when it came out. So being a first edition, 99, doesn't make it valuable. A first printing makes it valuable, okay? They keep the same style of the book, but they have different printing runs. They print a certain amount, and when they sell out, they print more. So this is a first printing of a first edition. And I'll show you here how you can tell. First off, this is probably backwards, but you're going to see a number line here, 1 through 10. The number 1 indicates that it's the first printing. When they go to the second printing of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, they get rid of the number 1. Okay? So you just have a 2. And when they come to the third printing, they get rid of the 2, and you just see the 3 as the lowest number. So if you see the lowest number in this number line on the bottom of the... Uh, page here in the first couple of pages, the title page or whatever it is, the um, printing page, that pretty much means it's a first printing, first edition. Okay. That's how you tell it's a first edition. Okay. And these numbers here also correlate um, with it being a first edition. Okay. One through 10, number one, which means it's a first edition. Oh, no, I'm sorry. First printing. That's what I meant. I have first printing. It says right here in the bottom, First American edition, okay? Now, all the books will say first American edition from now, from when it came out until now. If they look like this with the classic author, classic artist who designed this, and it's the same layout, it's first edition, right? But this is the first printing, like I said, because the number line has the one on there, so it's the first printing, right? Nobody cares if you have a first edition of Harry Potter because they made millions of them. So they've made other editions of this with different cover art, but the standard classic original artist, this artist, I think it's a female who designed all the Harry Potter books. I have more. Ugh. Yeah. Harry Potter. These are also first editions, by the way. Harry Potter and the Order of Phoenix and Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows. These were all designed the art was designed by the same person. So they don't care. Collectors don't care if this is a first edition. They want a first printing because it's the first time this book was on shelves. It's the first time it had an impact. It was released into the world. So this book being a first printing of a first edition from probably printed July or June in, in 1999 is worth about, I'd say, 40, 50 bucks in its condition which is good. Now, the only Harry Potter book that has an extreme amount of value is the first book. If you find Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, first edition, with the number line, when you see a number one on there, it will be worth probably like $1,000 or more, depending on somebody really wants it and if it's in good shape. And there are other factors too, like if you see uh, like a Publishers Weekly on the back. No, The Guardian, that's it. Publishers Weekly is, a, if you see The Guardian, there's a quote, like they have quotes on the back of the book. If you see a quote by The Guardian on Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, and it has the number one on the number line, you know it's the first printing of a first edition. You got a lot of money there. So a lot of people don't know that. So if you ever go to sales and see Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, you should always look because you never know. Anyway, that's just Harry Potter value. How do you tell the value of old books? Well, there are three things. How it looks, how interesting the topic is, and if it's famous or a first edition or whatever. An age, right? This is a book by Winston Churchill. Yeah, Winston Churchill wrote books. A lot of them. He was a novelist, I guess, before he became a big politician. This book, Coniston, is from 1906. And uh, yeah, so it's not super old. 
It's not super ornate. It's a basic, it looks decent on a shelf, right? But it's done by Winston Churchill, and he's famous, so it has more value. This book isn't extremely valuable. I don't think this is a first edition. I am not sure. Uh, published June 06, 1906. Uh, I'm not sure what edition this is, but it's probably not a first edition. Uh, it's maybe worth 20, 30 bucks. Who knows? This book is a lot older. The Sauntering by Charles Goodrich Whiting. This is, I think, a political book from 1886. And the difference between this book is this book is very ornate. It's got the nice design on there, the gold lettering. It's got the nice leaves and the background. And the side looks kind of nice with the leaves. This book looks good on a shelf. It looks good as a display piece. So somebody's going to pay probably more for this. I've seen one of these books online, The Sauntering, going for $100, which I don't know if they're going to get $100, but they can try. And this one's in pretty good shape. So it's in good condition. It looks nice, aesthetically pleasing, and it's really old. You got a decent, valuable book. Okay. There are still a lot of books around from the late 19th century, but, you know, at that point, Condition and how it looks really affects it because most of the books you find for the late 19th century like these Nobody knows who the author is. They're not famous So you're basically judging it on how old is it? What condition it's in and does it look nice? Because even if a book's in good condition and it's old if it's an ugly book and it doesn't have any pictures or anything People are probably not gonna want it So unless just because it's old So this is what's her name? Self-Raised from the Depths. This is kind of an Art Nouveau style by Southworth. Um, and there's some old writing in there. You know, somebody wrote their name a while ago in old ink, so it's all brown now. Yeah, that's pretty nice. This one doesn't have a picture. Is there one with a picture? Hold on, I gotta find one. Here's a good one. In Memoriam, this is like a poetry book. It's kind of small, but it's nice and ornate. I think it's from 1901, but you open it up, you get nice pictures. You got a nice like lithograph printing, you know. There's art here, you know, it looks decent. Where's the guy? You know, here's the guy, here's a printing of the guy. It looks kind of nice, it's ornate, okay? This book is worth a little more money because it's kind of ornate, you know, it has value. Here's a good book, Elements of Chemistry. That's right, a 19th century chemistry book from 1897. See, that's kind of cool. It's got a nice picture there of an old lab. It's got the nice introductory page. It was originally made in 1885. So this is a later printing in 1897. So this is a teacher's, this, no, this isn't a teacher's version. This is just a regular version. So, Inorganic Chemistry, Elements of Inorganic Chemistry, Descriptive and Quantitative by James H. Shepard, Boston, Massachusetts. So, maybe this is a teacher's version. Who knows? Yeah, they talk about a Bunsen burner in there. That's kind of nice. Bunsen, burn your Bunsens. Talk about hydrogen and the formulas there. So, they have formulas back then. K plus H2O equals KOH plus H. Now let's acquire the particularity to the meaning of the equation. Primarily, it means that potassium and water give a substance called potassium hydroxide, KOH, and hydrogen. This will be seen as a sign plus is red and is sign equals is red give. I'm probably reading this wrong. So, you know, there's some other cool diagrams in there. Um, I mean, obviously, all of this is based on what somebody's willing to pay. You could sell this to five bucks you, for somebody who might want to put it on a shelf. You could spend 50 bucks on it for somebody who's really interested in the topic. I mean, honestly, I'd probably sell this for like, I don't know, 20 bucks online or something. I'd put it on eBay or um, Etsy and see if people bid. Or I just have a set price. 
you got to factor in shipping, and this probably weighs about a pound or so. So I don't know what shipping would be. Usually you charge the customer shipping, but if you don't charge the customer shipping, you just charge a little extra for the main price. So it's in pretty decent shape. The binding is not ripped or anything. It's kind of cool. Iodine and hydrogen. Uh, tests for carbon, methane, ethylene, and oleophant gas. They'll just give you a bunch of carbon dioxide, carbon and nitrogen, sulfur dioxide, the sulfur octaves. Okay, 15 plus shipping, that's cool. One of these days when I figure out PayPal, because I'm a dumbass, I'll fix that shit up. Here's a book on roses. Here, I'll show you, is the one of the oldest books I have. And this is one of the most unique books I have. This is Conversations on Chemistry. That's right. And this book, you open up here, there's a little foxing with the uh, the uh, spots, but it's not bad. Yeah, there's somebody wrote in here, but it's very old. You can hardly tell. Old writing. I want to be careful with this. Okay. Um, this book is from... Ta -ta -da. 1831. 1831. That's right. Very old book. Conversations on chemistry in which the elements of that science are familiarly explained, illustrated by experiments, and 38 engravings on wood. That's right. Not just any engravings, wood engravings. That's right. And as you can see here um, on the first page, there is literally a diagram of a steam engine, 1831, which is around the time the first commercial locomotives for mining and other uses are being produced. Diagram of a steam engine here. So that's kind of cool. You can see that. That's neat. Might use that for a thumbnail. Cool. You objectify them. So this is pretty neat. It's a very old book. The paper feels almost like it's a vellum or a, it's just a very waxy almost. Here's a thermometer of sorts. Um, liquids, of course, can only be converted into vapor by caloric, but solvent power of this argent is not all confined to that class of bodies. A great variety of solid substances are dissolved by heat. Thus, metals, which are insoluble in water, can be dissolved by intense heat, being first fused or converted into a liquid, and then rarefied, never heard that word before, rarefied into an invisible vapor. That's right. Many other bodies, such as salt, gums, and yield to either of these solvents. No, it's some weird symbol. I don't know what that is. Calorine, and that, no doubt, is the reason why hot water will melt them so much better than cold water. Calorine, never heard of that. Anyway, there's some cool diagrams in here. Here's a picture of some contraption from 1831. So it's a cool book. This book is valuable. This book is probably a $100 book if not more. It's rare. I don't think any of you watching this will ever find this book ever again, except maybe a detailed internet search. It's really old, and it's in really good shape. The binding is not falling apart. So this book, I got to be careful with this. Here's another book. Ooh, a medical book. Radioactive Substances and Their Radiators by Rutherford. Cambridge University Press. Radioactive Substances. That's right. But this book is from 1913. So you got a book talking about radiation and their substances, something I didn't think people even knew about radiation back then, but it's from 1913. So who knows? You know, they knew about radiation, I guess. Velocity of groups of rays as fractions of the velocity of light. Ray spectrum, I guess. 
Secondary radiation and atomic weight. Here's a nice diagram. Cool. So it's a nice, neat book. So this book is not valuable because it's old, that old, because it's from 1913. It's not that old. It's not very valuable because it's ornate looking, although it's decent. This book is valuable solely because of the subject matter. People go, wow, they're talking about radiation in 1913. I want to read about that. I want to display that. That's neat. What they thought back then, I think this is even before Einstein's theory of relativity. Wasn't that 1916? So, you know, this is, or was that a little earlier? I forget. But, you know, this is neat because of the subject matter, you know? Any random book about, you know, if this was like a Bible or this was like a poetry book, it wouldn't be worth hardly anything. But since it's about radioactive substances, the value goes up a lot. Now, this book, I don't know, 30 bucks? It's in decent shape. Uh, let's see. Anything else? No, Here we go. Uh. Hold on. Man, where did I put that? Dude, man. Where did I put that? Oh, here we go. Oh. Uh. Here. Chemical Formulary Volume 1. I might. I got a lot of books. I'll have to check at some point. Chemical. This is interesting. National Geographic Magazine in mint condition. I know you're thinking. Mickey, everyone has National Geographic Magazine. So not worth crap. But not many people have National Geographic magazines in mint condition as old as this one. This is from June of 1916, during World War I, baby. The wild blueberry tamed, America's surpassing fisheries, common American wildflowers, or first national park east of the Mississippi, National Geographic Society, Hubbard Memorial, Memorial Hall, Washington, D.C. $2.50 a year for this magazine. And if you want to buy an individual magazine, it's 25 cents a copy. So, and on the back of this, it has gold metal flower. Eventually, Washburn and Crosby's gold metal flower. Why not now? That's right, people. Go down to your local store and get some old-fashioned gold metal flour, because why the fuck not? This is genuine Washburn and Crosby Co.'s gold metal flour. Do not mislead by other brands bearing somewhat similar names, or by parties claiming to have our gold metal flour under their own brand. Every barrel or sack of genuine Washburn Crosby Co. gold metal flour bears our firm name in full. Daily capacity, 50,000 barrels. Minneapolis, Minnesota, for sale everywhere. Yeah. This is cool. They got some nice, you know, um, oil paintings in there. Nice prints or whatever. Have flowers. Pretty nice. Those would be nice on their own on the wall. They got pictures of... People fishing for crabs. Cool. Back in 1916. So. Kind of neat. A Mitchell. Have you ever heard of a Mitchell? I guess it's a car company that doesn't exist anymore. Mitchell Cars. Don't throw away 26 extras. Mid-year 6. Mitchell. $1,325 for this car. Mitchell Mid-Year 6. Um, $1,325 for five-passenger touring car or three-passenger roadster. Seven-passenger touring body, $35 extra. If you want extra seats, it's only $35 extra, man. High speed, that's debatable. Economical. That's debatable. 640, 48 horsepower, which is probably pretty good back then because my car is only 100 horsepower. 
127-inch wheelbase. Complete equipment includes 26 extra features, whatever that is. And some other random advertisements. So, yeah. Anything else? Nah, that's a problem. Uh, here's some other old books. So, a few more books before I go, just to show you. Here's a German primer school book from... Um, 1886, German school book primer. Now, this is the book, I guess, if you were German learning English. Yep. Because, and there's some kids in there, so kids use this back in the day. You know, you got some things in German, items in German. And this is actually very, makes a lot of sense. Because the bottom of this, the top of this is in German. And right below it is in English. So you can literally just read the top sentence in German and follow along in English. And I have no clue why the Spanish textbooks of today, when I had to take years of Spanish in high school, middle school, I don't know why the hell they didn't have this. Because having Spanish right below English, even if you had to move around the words a little bit, would have been so much easier to help you learn. It's just kind of nice having this English right below the German. So. And there's some story of a donkey and a woman with a wood stove. Here's another book. Woman's Handiwork in Modern Homes by Harrison. This is a nice looking book. It's gold leaf. It's got a nice, uh, nice artsy pattern there. It's kind of a nice book. This book might be worth something. A lot of money. This is from 19 or 18. 70 something here's a nice drawing a nice lithograph or oil painting print very nice picture very bright interior morning room by lewis c tiffany that's right this is a picture a design by the tiffany company lewis c tiffany that's right they made all the tiffany um expensive tiffany company no doubt woman's handiwork in modern homes with numerous illustrations and five color plates from designs by Samuel Coleman and others. Charles Scribner and Sons, 1881. So if you want to have a modern home, you look at this book from over 100 years ago. Yeah, here are some more. Very nice, very bright pictures. Beautiful work on that. Oh, yeah. And here's another, uh, this is a math book from... 18, 1872. I had to glue the spine on here because it was falling apart. But this is a math book from 1872. Oh, maybe you're talking about this one. Woman's Handiwork in Modern Homes. Nice book. Woman's Handiwork in Modern Homes. Cool book. So anyway... I have tons more old books, but I could spend hours streaming it, and I'm getting tired. So eventually, oh, I'm going to sell these books, some of them slowly, as I go along. Right? Charles Goodrich Whiting and his sauntering is not going to stay with me for much longer, hopefully. But hopefully there are people interested in them. They also might sell this. This might be one of the first books I sell. So if somebody wants a first edition, Harry Potter, first printing of a first edition, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, maybe when I get um, PayPal and other stuff set up on a stream or something, somebody can buy this. Highest bid or something or 30 bucks. I don't know. I might even sign it. I might sign any books that people want. Or if they don't want me to sign them, I'll do something else. Who knows? I don't know. I'm flexible on prices. Most of these books I got for not very much money. In fact, a lot of these books I got for free from the trash. 
I, I was working for a lady who had a bookstore for a while. Or no, that was not library. I was working for a woman who had a library and who worked for a library. It was a small library and they got donations. So half the old books, she'd just give to me. So books like this, she's like, well, people aren't renting these, so you can take them. So, because they sold like, um, if they got like books with barcodes they could scan, they would, you know, try to sell them on uh, Amazon or whatever. But books like this, old books without barcodes, they couldn't. So they just gave them to me. So, or she did. So, yeah. 30 bucks ain't bad, bro. 30 bucks ain't bad. Oh, shit. It's 8 o'clock, but my damn computer is an hour backwards. God, I have to set up OBS with this, and it's so awful. And the streaming bit rate and all that nonsense, it's so ugh. I like just doing this. You can just click stream, and it goes, okay, we're going live in like three seconds. And you're like, oh, good. You know, you don't have to worry about setting up any encoding keys and any of that shit. So much fucking better. So much fucking better. So, all right. Yeah, shit, this is my longest stream ever, baby. I got four people watching me, but I got to go. I got to go. I'll see you again sometime in the near fucking future when I feel like streaming again. Say goodbye to Mr. Potter here. Mmm, yeah, say goodbye to Mr. Potter. Mmm, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You like that, Harry, you son of a bitch? Mmm, yeah, mmm, yeah. All right. See ya. Yes, I want to end the stream.